Good morning. Denise Dryden here from Whitefish, Montana, and I'm downtown in front of the Great Northern Brewery in front of the railroad station, and I'm doing a Facebook Live every week um, in order to bring some of the things that um, I'm learning in my coaching and I wanted to share with you. And rather than write a book, <laughs> I'm collecting a series of videos that have some really poignant information that I wanted to bring to you. So for those of you who've been following um, me on Facebook, I've just returned from the Transformational Presence Global Gathering that was in Chester, Connecticut. It was four days of 42 people from 16 countries who are corporate leaders, corporate trainers, or corporate leaders, corporate coaches, and personal professional coaches um, like myself who are learning different ways of coaching presence. So I thought today we would talk about, you know, what does it really take to be present, right? And so presence to me is when we can ground ourselves, when we can just sort of retreat in, breathe, <laughs> allow ourselves to, to notice what's going on and just get out of our head, right? And to start, you know, looking at what is it that I can discover right now? What is it that I can that I can find that I haven't been able to find before? How do I access potential? And how do I let sort of the future talk to me and find out what it has to say? Which sounds really out there, but when you start really realizing that we as individuals sort of have an agenda and we are like, you know, by next year I want to be here or by next month I want to do this or this week I've got this, this and this in my head. What we forget is to be present, right? To be completely present and go, I have an idea of what I wanna do and I'm gonna let the world, let life talk to me and tell me what it wants. And then I get to choose, do I wanna do that? Oh wow, that's completely different than something I thought about. And this is what I choose to do, right? It gives us choice. So think about this when we play this out. Um, for I, I do a lot of coaching for um, adults who are parents, right? And sometimes it's about the individual self-care. Sometimes it's about the relationship between spouses, um, partners. Sometimes it's the relationship between the parent and the child. And so how does this concept of presence come in and affect us? If we are in discovery, if we are taking in information and looking for what wants to happen, right? You know, sort of gathering information, then we are flexible and we can move with the information as it comes along. Um, we can adapt, we can adjust, we can decide to step in a different direction. How does this apply to those of you who have colleagues in a work environment, right? Um, so what that might look like is I have a certain role to play, I have job responsibilities, but how I get there is completely up to me. And how I participate in the collective team that I participate in, whether that's, you know, I have assistants that work with me or I, I'm part of an equal team um, collaborative, it's how do I show up and allow myself to be flexible and malleable and also um, allow something that maybe we didn't think about happen. Right? What happens if we create something completely different than what it was? I think that that's what um, transformational presence and coaching and leadership has been teaching me is, you know, we can think about it all we want, but until we actually start to um, allow something outside of what we can create in form, allow something different than what we can mull around in our heads, we don't even know what's out there. We don't even know what's possible, right? So. Um, when we are present, we listen to what wants to happen. And that term, what wants to happen. Have you ever had that little tap, 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 you're not happy in your job. Tap, 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 there's something else I can do with my child. Tap, 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 maybe there's something else I can do different in my relationship. What if it's me? What if it's the way that I'm holding on to something? And then when we use that term, what wants to happen, and we get quiet and we center ourselves and we allow the information to come in, then we are allowing, right? Allowing, it's allow, 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 allow. 
what wants to happen to inform us. So um, when I was at the, um, at the gathering, my dear friend Bevan Neiman and I got to uh, facilitate a discovery process. And so, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't for, you know, uh, facilitators presenting information out and everybody sitting there taking notes. It was providing a certain setting for discovery to happen. So I brought some information for you. Uh, so what we did was we were in, we were, we were charged with the um, topic of how to take fierce gentleness and ferocious love, which is, you know, daunting terms, and then approach it from the position of a spiritual warrior. Like what if you are just empowered in who you are and what you know how to do, and you know how to hold this kind of fierce gentleness, like, you know, like this empowered gentleness and this um, ferocious love, which is how do you let love get big? And then how do you represent yourself? So what we came up with was some ancient symbols and I wanted to share them with you. So the first thing is when we are present, when we are completely centered into ourselves, what we're doing is we're doing self-care first. We're doing, we're, we're managing our own little universe, right? And so when we go to ancient wisdom, we come up with the dot, which is on hieroglyphics in the walls. It's in Egyptian symbols. You can see dots everywhere, right? And so that was the first form of the human saying, this is who I am. This is me. This also might be my family. This also might be my community. This also might be the world. It doesn't matter what it means. It's what it means to you. So when you're in a family system, or when you're in a work system, or when you're just by yourself, what does this mean to you? How do you encompass your own role, your own part, and you become present to, I'm just a dot in the world, paying attention to what the world is asking me to be, right? And so then what Devin and I did is we shifted over to the circumpunct which again is in ancient hieroglyphics. It was brought in by the Egyptians. It's been a standard, a powerful symbol used by the Masons and in um, most of the cathedrals and um, buildings that have taken centuries to build and are now these standing um, monuments to faith and inspiration and creativity. And so the circumpunct, what I like about the circumpunct is that it's this dot in the middle. And then there's this sphere of influence, which is, you know, what do I, what do I impact out, right? What do I impact, what do I allow in? How am I holding for this connection, this collaboration with the world? So again, I don't want to tell you what this means for you. What I want you to do is play with it. Throughout the next couple days, next couple hours when you're having your coffee this morning if you're on the Pacific Coast or settling down for the evening later on the East Coast or anywhere in the world, draw a dot and start to sort of play with it. Who am I? What am I here for? What's ma what matters to me? And then draw the circumference around it, right? And this circumpunct is a way of looking at what is my realm of influence? What is my part in the world? If I hold my part, how does my part influence those around me? And so we bring this into parenting. If I'm grounded and I'm paying attention and I'm present and I notice that my child is really struggling in school and not struggling because they just aren't doing their homework, struggling because they're not making a connection or maybe their processing is much slower than the speed at which a traditional school goes along. Get curious about that. Start to, start to you know, play with it and go, I wonder why this school and this environment doesn't make my child smile, doesn't bring my child joy, doesn't allow for expression. And, and when you're looking at this in the realm of work, what happens when we just sort of shrink into ourselves and we forget that we have 
this influence of work. And if this doesn't bring you, if, if your influence isn't present when you're working and you don't like going there and you don't want to be there, then how do you slow down and pay attention to, well, if not this, what? Or maybe it isn't even this. Maybe it's just that I'm having this issue over here with this person, which is asking me to pay attention to it and to figure out what I want to do with this relationship so that everything becomes a little bit easier. So this is the kind of stuff that I do in my coaching. We use symbols and we play with them. We use, I set up environments and we, we just explore because you know what you need. None of us can tell you what you want. And if you're interested in, in more, ask me. Ask me to come talk. Ask me to talk to you on the phone ask me. I'm available. <laughs> you can find me on denisedrydencoaching.com and uh, I hope you enjoyed this lovely morning in Whitefish. It's one of my favorite places on the planet. Have a great Sunday. Have a great week.